Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel. And uh, this is an interesting story to that kind of goes with my way of thinking. I always say it. A lot of people are always telling me that I'm totally wrong on security. And it's the other way around. Security is not what you think. And um, when somebody comes up to me, it's like, oh, I'm using this you know, security software. It's 100% and it's... No, it's not. It never is. It never was. It will never will be. And it's not better than anything else. When I see these charts of what antivirus is better on some websites, sorry, I, I don't go by that. I don't care. It's, it's not even talking about what security is all about, which is what you do and, sec and security updates and patches, not the software that you use to protect yourself. And this little story is a great example of how useless antivirus are and how unpatched systems actually cause serious issues. You know, when I say patch, update, update. Stripfly. Stripfly is a malware that actually infected more than a million PCs. And get this, you think you're safe on Mac? You think you're safe on Linux? I get this all the time. Oh, I'm on Linux. There's no problem with me. The security is fine. No, it's not. Just look at that. Linux, almost half and half. More than a million, and it's almost 50-50, the number of Linux machines and Linux uh, and Windows machines that were infected with this. It's a multi-platform type, very sophisticated malware. It's probably created by a state, so we probably a government somewhere, because it's so sophisticated that... It, it shows that it's not a little hacker in his basement. That's for sure. It actually um, infects machines, and the way it infects them is it actually uses a flaw that existed for a long time in uh, the um, SMB version 1, uh, which is the um, kind of a file sharing or... Uh, type um, protocol for um, computers and for you know uh, servers and of course it exploited that uh, for a long time what is particularly interesting about this malware is that if it's Kaspersky that found it that discovered it existed but when it started looking at it it noticed that it started infecting machines way, way back in 2017. Which means for years, it went unnoticed to security software, unnoticed to security uh, teams and you know servers and companies. It has Tor-based traffic concealing mechanisms. That means it uses the dark web to um, basically you know, conceal its traffic because it's encrypted and you don't see it. It has worm-like spreading capabilities and is capable of downloading packages from the web. And this is Kaspersky's diagram of how this thing worked. Um, so it exploits the SMB v1. It infects you, so you're the victim. And then the code itself goes into kernel memory. It actually goes into the wininit.exe file in Windows, so it can always be there. And, of course, this is one of the files that is always running. Uh, it actually has different other ways of showing up. It had download packages and actually runs, for example, you might see chrome.exe, which is, you know, I'm not, it's Google Chrome. Okay. No, it's actually, it's disguising itself as a chrome.exe um, type executable uh, does the same thing in uh, Linux but it actually infects the host in Linux in a different way with the system files it goes on Bitbucket GitHub GitLab and can download packages it can create all sorts of commands it uses PowerShell in Windows to actually create batch files that execute all sorts of commands and it's extremely difficult to remove and this shows you that for years and years and years, this existed and no one knew about it. So this is pretty interesting. Um, its main, what, what, what they are seeing is that its main focus was mostly to 
uh, do cryptocurrency with Mon Monero mining. It has a Monero, Monero mining module. And it's camouflage. That is what is camouflage as Chrome.exe process. So you don't, you know, you just see it. It's like, oh, Chrome. Chrome's running. But nope, it's not Chrome. And uh, it, of course, can um, evade pretty much detection uh, everywhere. It can do more than that, and that's why it has this download capability. It can actually pretty much do what it wants once it's on a PC or a server or anywhere. Uh, and it is pretty amazing when you think about it that for so many years this thing existed and um, that it actually went undetected. And this, this shows you that, um, you know, antivirus is useless. It's a great example of that. And shows you that updates are important as it's exploiting a flaw that once fixed, it just can't do anything. I say it all the time, patch your windows, patch your software with the latest security updates. And, uh, you know, just be careful what you do. There is no virus that really gets in your system without a flaw or some thing that you did. And I get this all the time. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's Windows. Yeah, Linux and Mac are, aren't better. Stop thinking that also. This is making me laugh. Every time I see a, 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 an Apple user saying, well, you know, I'm secure. I, I use an Apple computer. No, you're not. Stop thinking that. You're not more secure than Windows. Never was, never will. Linux is the same thing. It's, you know, the, the, the only difference is a question of numbers. We've talked about it a lot. Um, you know, you always go for the dominant operating system. So there will be more malware created for Windows because there's more chance of, you know, infecting computers on Windows because of the numbers. But, you know, this is a great story that just tells you be careful, patch your systems, and don't do dumb things on the internet. Uh, and you know what? For the most part, you're going to be safe. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.